Actually, I am very surprised that I even made it here because um, when I left, we had blizzard conditions and uh, they closed the airport. They canceled over 700 flights. It took me over four hours to, to drive there. And then when I got there, there were no passengers because all the connecting flights and all the crews couldn't make it to the airport. And so they only allowed a few international flights to leave. And mine was one of them. And I was only one of three people in the entire cabin. And I, I asked the, um, the flight attendant if the pilot knew how to drive in snow. And she said, well, it's his first day, so we don't really know. <laughs> but we made it. And uh, I'm very glad to be here. And interestingly enough, they started in the United States to name winter storms. And the name of the winter storm that tried to stop me was called Q. Now, if you remember from Star Trek, there was an entity called Q who was from another dimension and tried to take over things. What is even more interesting, at uh, December, when I was leaving on my South American trip, again, a winter storm came and closed the airports in Chicago, and that storm was named Draco. So, but you know what? On both occasions, I and uh, some of my cohorts did some of our mental work, which I'm going to teach you tomorrow if you come back. And guess what? When Draco hit and the airport was closed, hurricane force winds, heavy snow, when I woke up the next morning to leave, the sun was out. The airport was open. And when I got to the airport uh, this week, mine was one of the few flights out. What about my family? Who am I? You may not know, my great uncle was the first president of the Soviet Union. His name was Yakov Spiridlov. And uh, his brother was my grandfather. And my grandfather was sent to Liverpool in the 1920s in order to help establish the Communist Party in Britain. And from Liverpool, he was sent to the United States to do the same thing. His other brother, Benjamin Spiridlov, was uh, sent originally to the United States in order to form a bank, which there was a Spiridlov Bank in New York uh, for many years. And that was a, uh, an agenda of raising money to uh, start the Russian Revolution, uh, which they did. And then that brother went back to the Soviet Union and he started the mind control, which I'm going to be talking to you about today and possibly tomorrow, um, which now is global in nature. But the family, the name Sverdlov, actually comes from a Viking uh, origin. The name Sverd means sword, and Luf means leaf. So it's the sword and the leaf. And if you read the Icelandic uh, sagas of the Viking uh, history, it talks about the uh, Viking name, the sword and the leaf, uh, who actually helped to colonize Iceland, then Greenland, and may have even gone to North America in the 900s AD. A lot of what you have taught, been taught about history is incorrect. I've gone the wrong way. And I just told you about uh, the Viking connection, Greenland, uh, and that's the name Sverdlov, Sword in the Leaf. And uh, my family was a part of a Viking group called the Rus. And the Rus, which means rose, uh, were the ones who entered into uh, the eastern part of Europe and actually started uh, the country called Russia, or the land of the rose. That's the actual name of Russia. That's my uh, great uncle, Yakov Sverdlov, and that's him with Lenin. And um, uh, people say we look alike, but I think I'm a lot better looking than that. Um, he was sent to start the uh, Communist Party. Now, my father, my father uh, was taken by the American government and stationed in a base underneath El Paso, Texas. And he worked in a secret location there. Uh, his mother, my grandmother, was a Soviet spy in World War II. And uh, when she passed away, they found uh, images of her taken with Nazi soldiers in uh, compromising positions. And apparently she was sent to blackmail them. At the end of the war, 
the Soviet government didn't have any money to pay her, so they sent her to Antwerp, Belgium, and they gave her a huge marquee diamond ring, uh, which they gave her as a payment, and she actually gave that ring to my mother when she married my father. My medical birth, my birth is actually in uh, medical records. When my mother went to give birth to me, uh, they examined her and determined she had no birth canal. And they told her that it was impossible for her to have become pregnant in the first place. So they took her to a hospital that was not yet open, it was under construction. In fact, there was no heat in the building. And there they performed a surgery on her that allowed me to be born. And so my birth is a mystery. And years later, when I was part of the Montauk Project, they did tell me that I was actually genetically manipulated and implanted, implanted in her. And that was in days when that was not heard of. My doctor, when I was a child, was Dr. Mengele. And I know that sounds very odd to you, but he survived the war. And he was called Dr. Green in the United States and Canada. And he used to perform uh, all kinds of tests on me that were very painful. Every Friday, I was taken to a huge Victorian mansion in New York City. And there I was um, very brutally examined. That's the only way I can describe it. It was extremely painful to me. And I was also taken to a dentist uh, who would drill my teeth without anesthesia and put things in my teeth. Many, many years later, I went to another doctor who was a dentist, who was a holistic dentist, and she said, who did this to you? You have unnecessary surgery here in your mouth. And of course, I did confront uh, my mother about that, and first she denied it, and then she admitted it. Alien abductions, you've heard about what was just discussed earlier. First of all, I will have to tell you, Many of the alien experiences that people can remember from the dream state is actually done by government. Many people actually report seeing military people next to the aliens. Sometimes it involves programming matrix experiences which come forward to the front of the mind, which I'm going to talk to you about. There's, it's a very complicated situation. I'm not telling you that none of it is true. I'm telling you that there's a chunk of it that is either mind control and programming or done by government masquerading as aliens. And that I know from my experience in the Montauk Project. But I also want to tell you, of course, my work is controversial. What I tell you is controversial. You have a choice to accept it or reject it. That's your choice. I'm only going to tell you what I know, what I experienced, what may be coming for all of you, and then you can decide for yourself. You also should realize that human beings use less than 10% of their brain capacity and only 3% of their DNA capacity. So would you hire a person who was not using 90% of their brain and 97% of their body was useless, would you hire that person to work for you? Well, someone hired you in your, in your work. And so, unfortunately, that's the status of humanity. Now, that's an average. There may be some of you out there that use 40 or 50% of your brain. Maybe you use 5 or 6% of your DNA. But what could you do if you opened up even a fraction of that amount? What kind of abilities would you have? ESP, levitation, uh, by location, you can imagine what you could do with just even a fraction of that opened up. The human brain can only perceive 0.5% of existence. So that means you are missing out on 99.5% of what exists. The most supercomputer that we have can only perceive 2% of existence. That's 98% that we have no clue of what's going on out there. And there's a lot going on out there. We exist, as Simon mentioned, in multiverse. There are infinite realities. 
Your every thought can change the direction of the timeline in which you exist. There are infinite versions of you. There are alternate versions of you that decided not to come here today. There are versions of you that decided to live in a different country than you live in now, and so on and so on. Every decision changes the timeline that your mind pattern will accept. You might have the ability to see close enough. How many of you can see beyond the physical range of existence? You can see energy fields, uh, apparitions, etc. Then you have your pineal gland is more developed and can see beyond the physical ranges that exist in other people. You do have an energy field that glows around you and you can tell the illness of a body or of a mind by the colors and the images that appear in it. I want to get to Montauk Project. If you look here on the right, that very point of the island is where Montauk exists. It was originally built in 1799 by George Washington, who wanted to build a supply area with a small underground area so that if the east coast of the US were invaded by the British, they would be able to fight them off. This area was extended over a couple of centuries so that by the early 1900s, it was very deep and very wide. And in fact, as they dug deeper, they discovered other areas underneath it that existed for thousands of years that actually connected to an Atlantean archipelago that extended up in the North Atlantic and ended here. That's where the Montauk base is at the very end. And when you drive from the western part of the island to the eastern part, it's relatively flat. But then when you get to the area of Montauk, it becomes mountainous and there are peaks as if something came up out of the ocean and, surrounded, and was surrounded by water. And I remember as a child, many strange visitors that would come to my room. Um, Lock on the shape like a fish. Now the history of Montauk, again, I show you this island in the Atlantic. It's not a very good version, but that's where Atlantis existed between Europe and North America and South America. The Montauk Lighthouse was built again in 1799, and you can see it's up on, our, on a hill, and the ocean surrounds it. In the 1940s, the people who lived in this area noticed German U-boats coming towards the point and submerging and then disappearing. No one stopped them. Then they would see the U-boats leaving. Again, nobody stopped them. This is World War II. I can tell you that at some level of government, in those days, the Germans and the Americans were working together because they had the same agenda. Montauk Indians, whose land was confiscated in order to build this area, called their leader Pharaoh, and in fact had a culture very similar to the ancient Egyptians. And it is believed that many of the Eastern Coast Native Americans actually have Egyptian origins. And from time to time, people unearth artifacts that are Egyptian, not just on the East Coast, but westward. And even Viking uh, artifacts are uncovered as far west as Oklahoma. As I'm going to tell you, and I think I mentioned it, history that you've learned is fake. Remember that history is written by the winner, not by what existed before. And so is science, and so is uh, biology. A lot of what you're told is not correct. If the government tells you something's not good for you, eat it. <laughs> the underground tunnels exist for miles and miles. Um, and there is a submarine base underneath there. In fact, recently there have been earthquakes in the area because I believe they're expanding the tunnel system and the tube system that actually crisscrosses the entire world. The tube system is an ancient. It was built by the reptilian androgynous creatures who will colonize this planet first. 
and was then added to by the Atlanteans or human mammalians that came afterwards. And they created this system and the government uses it. And by the way, Montauk area was the only place in the United States in World War II where the Germans actually landed on the coastline. And they found their, uh, their uh, equipment on the beach, they had changed their clothes, they took the train into New York City where they performed espionage. They were eventually caught and placed in a federal prison in 1944. When the war ended, they were not repatriated to Germany. And in fact, in 1946, they were executed by the American government. So you have to ask, why would the American government execute prisoners of war of a country with whom they're no longer at war and who were exchanging prisoners? And the answer has to be that these men knew something they did not want the public to know. In those days, it was very easy to simply execute people. I will say, and I do have to be careful what I say in public these days, because the United States, unfortunately, has become very much like the Soviet Union, but even more so, it has become more like Nazi Germany. When I return from every trip, I'm extensively questioned, where did I go, who did I see, why did I go, couldn't I have done it in the United States? I know when I travel and I ask people to come, to visit and do seminars with me in the U.S., many people are afraid to come there. I don't blame them. I have a U.S. passport and I'm afraid to go back. <laughs> ah, they did discover under the Montauk Point alien technology, or I should say Atlantean technology, which was sometimes almost 300,000 years old because this planet was colonized. There was no life here naturally. We mentioned, or Simon mentioned, about the 1947 <coughs> Roswell incident. But before that happened, that was in July of 1947, but in April of 1947, there was a pilot who was flying over Mount Rainier in Washington State and noticed nine objects flying in formation at very high speeds. And that's when the UFO mania happened. And he gave out a gift <laughs> of this newspaper, which uh, happened, it was after the crash, it was the day after the UFO, uh, or the, the vehicle, the disc as they called it, in, in Roswell, New Mexico. And, uh, you know, it says, on there that they have recovered uh, a, a saucer. That was the news. Now, in 2009, there was a very brilliant researcher, UFO researcher, who um, took uh, this image, and there's another image of uh, holding up a debris, and there's a man holding a piece of paper, which is illegible. But with digital equipment, he scanned in on that piece of paper and blew it up, and it clearly states that the debris was taken to uh, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio. So basically, and that was an official government newspaper, it confirmed it. From that, there was a meeting at Holloman Air Force Base in 1954, where the U.S. government made a deal with those little gray creatures. And in that deal, it said, that uh, the aliens would have the right to abduct U.S. citizens. Eisenhower. It was Eisenhower, yeah. He made, uh, they said he was going for dental work, and he was unavailable for the weekend. And there is a film of the landing of the three craft in Holloman Air Force Base. Now, the deal was, aliens could abduct U.S. citizens as long as they provide the location and identities of who they abduct, and the U.S. citizens must be brought back to the point of abduction, and their memories must be wiped of the abduction, and they must be unharmed. In exchange, the U.S. government provided these beings with a base in Dulce, New Mexico, in the Four Corners area, and uh, they would uh, give the Americans fantastic amounts of technology, to make them the sole superpower on the earth. 
and they did. Except, you can see the base there on the top uh, where the yellow and the green meet, that's Tulsa, New Mexico. It is the largest underground base in the world. It is almost 100 miles wide. It is nine levels deep. The first three levels are for human habitation only. The second three levels are for joint human-alien cohabitation. And the lower levels are for alien habitation only. And this went on for a bit of time. And then the Americans found out that the aliens lied to them. People were being taken and not brought back. Or they were being brought back in very poor physical condition. And correct, uh, as uh, Simon mentioned, there was more than one crash. The one in Roswell, and there was one in Aztec, New Mexico as well. And in fact, there were many, even in Norway and even in Britain, uh, there were many crashes all over the world back then. Or I should say, uh, shootouts. But uh, this base, level nine, was the uh, very, very bad area. It was called the Hall of Horror. And there, uh, when Americans came down and actually literally broke into the lower levels because they knew something was going on, they found humans in cages, they found vats of fetus growing in these liquids that were not human, but looked like reptilians. They found hybrids of human, reptilian, human, insect, human, animal, alien, insect, alien, animal, every possible combination that you can imagine. And so there was a little bit of a war. You may have heard of the Dulce Wars. Humans lost, and now that base is completely alien and sealed off. It can only be reached through underground tunnels from the mountains. That was in 1969 when the wars took place. 1970, SAGE radar, which was now designed to watch Soviet Union aircraft from coming to the uh, coast of the United States, became obsolete. And so all of the Air Force bases that had SAGE radar, like the one you see there, were becoming derelict and decommissioned. But if you remember the map, Montauk sticks out into the water. It's isolated. There's only one road in, one road back. In the wintertime, very few people live there because you, it's hard to live there in the wintertime. And so it's a perfect place to do something without much observation. And plus it already had the underground areas, it had the tunnel systems from the ocean. They decided to do this base into a control system. When they realized that there are only a few thousand people in the world who want to control billions, armies and weapons are not enough. The most logical thing you can do to control the world population is mind control and programming and to make people think that they want the same thing as the government is willing to give them. Create a problem so the solution will be imposed and accepted. And that's what they did at Montauk. They created the Montauk uh, base, which was about mass mind control. They brought in German scientists who were taken or saved from the Nuremberg trial in World War II. This was only revealed in the later part of the 1990s. It was called Project Paperclip, where they brought these scientists to the United States, Canada, and even Britain. And on the other side of the Iron Curtain, the Soviet Union had taken their own a crop of German scientists back with them to develop their technology and mind control as well. And um, the idea is to turn the human race into cyborgs, robots, who do what they're told, to accept the chip in your hand or in your brain. And any of you who have had abduction experiences already have those chips in many parts of your body already. And uh, they're being activated. Yes, I told you about the Nazi scientist, but the best one uh, was actually a Scottish scientist. I thank my Scottish friends here. Um, 
Dr. Ewan Cameron, he was enamored with the German experiments in the concentration camps who uh, to decide how you could fracture the mind and then re-manipulate it into something else. And so he was brought to Canada, uh, where in Montreal, um, he created a clinic where they did psychic driving under with Nazi instructions. Psychic driving meant you took a person, freeze them one day, heat them up the next day, starve them for two days, overfeed them for two days, keep them awake for two days, make them sleep for two days, fracture the mind so that it doesn't know what to expect. They would put a filter between the eyes. This side would see a picture of a flower blooming. This side would see a child being murdered and ripped apart at the same time. This ear would hear classical music. This ear would hear acid rock all simultaneously. So the mind fractures in order to accommodate the input of information. That's called psychic driving. And it causes the brain to split into a cube of 13 by 13 by 13, which adds up to 2,000, the multiplication, 2,197 compartments that can be programmed into an alter personality, a partial alter personality, a specific function, etc., etc. It's an entire science. And so, in the old days, they would have to take a person physically and do this to them so the mind would fracture. Now you don't have to do that. Now with cell tower transmissions, satellite transmissions, your new uh, wall televisions, your, your computers, the carrier waves can be transmitted directly from any uh, satellite, any transmission point to any specific person or to a group of people and download. It piggybacks your brain wave so you think it's your own thought when in fact it's something that's extraneous to your own thinking. Yes, in the beginning in mom talk, they would take derelict people, homeless children, children of drug addicts, those who wouldn't be missed, and they would take them to the project and work on them and experiment on them. But what they learned from the original uh, German programs was that those who had blonde or red hair or blue or green eyes were more easily programmed. The DNA in such people have an enzyme that allows the programming to take hold. The darker the skin, the less of this enzyme exists, and those people are more resistant. And that's why they are making a very tremendous effort to eliminate native peoples. They are basically destroying the black race in Africa. They are poisoning the uh, South Asians. Uh, there are very few Native Americans left anymore. And you may not know, uh, perhaps you heard, but both the uh, Canadian government and the Australian government uh, would take Aboriginal children from their parents and put them in homes of Caucasian people so that they would lose their sense of identity and culture. And that went on until relatively recently. Just only a couple decades ago that was stopped. The idea is to have perfect genetics, to create a flawless person. But what does that mean? That doesn't mean that they want to create beautiful people. It means they want to create people who are perfectly controllable. You know, in the United States today, they are allowing little girls, 10, 11, 12 years old, to have breast implanted, to have face changes, so that they could look nicer. Males are having implants, implants on their bodies as well. Why? What's the point? The less natural you are, the more cyborg you are. The more you're willing to accept implants and changes that are unnatural and artificial to the body, so you can become a robot slave race. Now, how do they take people? How do, how do they take me from my home to the Montauk project? 
They can create wormholes, and there's a difference between a wormhole and a vortex. A wormhole connects point A to point B within the same reality, physical existence. A vortex goes from one physical reality, or any reality, to another type of reality. It goes interdimensionally. So there is a difference between vortex and wormhole. Just like in American law, there is a difference between the word alien and extraterrestrial. They're two different things. And there's a page of law that states, no US citizen can have unsupervised contact with an alien being or with an extraterrestrial. On the same page of law, it says no US citizen can have uh, unsupervised contact with a dolphin. So they're kind of lumping the dolphin in with the extraterrestrials. And there's a reason. Dolphins have a greater brain capacity, they're more intelligent than human beings, and the origin is not from the Earth. By law, an alien being is a physical person who comes from another physical planet within our universe. An extraterrestrial is a borderline physical, non-physical being who could be from other universes. So there's a difference. It's easy to monitor an alien. It's not so easy to monitor an ET. Yes, entrainment is when they imprint the brain with a mind pattern that wasn't originally there. What they will do is they will take your original mind pattern and they will hook another mind pattern onto it that might have a similar nature. So let's say you have uh, anger issues. They can very easily create vigilante or stalker programming in such a person by hooking that program onto the anger issue mind pattern. People are sometimes kept in cages. As I mentioned, they're forced to witness children being killed. Uh, they're watched uh, animal torture, forced to stay awake. This is all part of psychic driving that I told you about. Oh, well, one of the famous things they do is they take the person and they bring them to near death by drowning and at the last moment pull them out. And when they're pulled out, they're told that the one who pulled them out is actually their savior, and that is their programmer. So they always refer to the programmer as their savior. It's a bait and switch from the God mind to something else, so that you acquiesce to the programming. There are many tortures uh, and intense doctrinations where you're told that human beings are not capable of fending for themselves or creating their own society that they must have a society created for them. Otherwise, human beings would be um, un unable to, to, to control themselves. Now, alien encounters. Of course, if you take a poll, like CNN will take a poll, and it says that 70% of the population believes that aliens exist. Yet, if you ask someone, do you believe in aliens, they won't give you a definite answer most of the time because they're afraid, at least in many, in many countries where that's not considered to be uh, uh, agreeable. But when you realize, I want you to realize something. In the Milky Way galaxy where we live, we live in the Milky Way, there are 400 billion stars. And those, in, in just the, this galaxy, then times that by a hundred billion galaxies, if less than one-tenth of one percent had intelligent life, that would still be millions and millions of civilizations. So the universe is teeming with life. Anyone who feels we're alone in the universe isn't really thinking because it's not possible, statistically alone, that humans are the only ones that exist. And just recently, and this has been going on for the last six months to almost a year, conventional media through the space agencies 
have been bombarding you with stories of possible life in space. They've been telling you that there are 400 to 500 million Earth-like planets in our galaxy. They're telling you that. Every few weeks they come up with a new Earth, an Earth-like planet that they found outside our solar system. They're preparing you for something. They're preparing you for a revelation. Yes, I also agree that there's going to be a staged alien invasion this year. And I recently did a television show with, in Russia uh, where they announced on that show that it would be August 18th, 2013. The Russians are very sure of the exact date. And I will tell you something, and not to be prejudiced because my family is Russian, but the information that comes out of Russia, especially on Russia Today, is much more accurate than you would get in other uh, CNN, Fox, BBC, etc. So uh, there's a reason why the Russians are doing that. The Draco reptilians, which you heard about earlier, they are androgynous. And they come from the Draco star system, which is very ancient. All humanity came from a star system called Lyra. I'm not sure if I have a slide up here, but I think I might. Lyra is the home of all humanity. And the Draco, eons ago, attacked it. And the refugees fled to other star systems and created new civilizations over many hundreds of thousands of years, millions of years. And so the reptilians consider themselves superior to humans for two reasons. Because they are androgynous and they believe that the god mind has no gender, it's neutral. They therefore consider themselves to be more representational of God. Whereas humans have to break into male and female and differentiate and so they're inferior. Secondly, reptilian genetics do not change over eons of time. Even look at reptiles on the earth today. Millions of years, very little change. Whereas mammalian, constantly evolving and adapting. To the reptilian mindset, that proves that mammals are weaker and need to constantly change. Whereas the reptilians are stable and more godlike and so remain always the same. So they have an agenda to upgrade inferior life forms wherever they find it. And they found it here. There are also the Ontarians uh, who uh, also have their origins in Lyra, but they are very much, their civilization is very much like the ancient Greeks. There's the Rigelians, which I'm sure you heard of. Now the Rigelians claim that they were once very human and that the Draco attacked their world with nuclear weapons and that this uh, deteriorated their bodies so that they look like the little greys that you have seen in the UFO lore. The beings from Sirius A, very tall, very bright blue eyes, they are considered to have the highest technology in the galaxy that we know of. They deal with the reptilians, they deal with humans, they have no uh, borders, boundaries, they'll, they'll deal with anyone that gives them uh, uh, an agenda that they can use. They're very, you, they're users basically. Um, I told you about the uh, examinations, the, ah, the sexual ritual is part of the reptilian religion. They believe in invoking astral entities from the lower astral layers who then give them information, energy to fulfill their goals and desires. And they do this through sexual magic ritual, which uh, afterwards the uh, people use are either uh, killed or sent back into a different programming altar. But many of the programs out there involve sexual magic ritual. Dr. Wilhelm Reich was uh, the one who uh, found out about uh, this. Uh, he was an Austrian doctor who did a lot of experiments back in the early 1900s. 
And of course, when the Third Reich came into power, he had to escape and he came uh, uh, to, to North America. And he started uh, his experiments and he talked about orgon, orgon and uh, the life energies. And then he talked about how to deprogram from uh, sexual programming uh, that was installed by the government. And he was sent to a federal prison in Pennsylvania where he mysteriously died. Uh, in 1957, after being there for a year or two, and all of his work basically has been confiscated. Uh, whatever you see out there on the internet that says it's Wilhelm Reich is a very watered down. It is illegal in the United States to, for anyone to say that they work with Wilhelm Reich techniques. And I also believe it's illegal here in Britain. They use drugs, you're forced to breathe gas, they use electrodes on the body to create fear and shock, so that fractures the mind. Uh, yes, there's human sacrifice. They invoke demons, as I mentioned to you. They keep children under strict control, and especially in school. Uh, I'm not sure how things are here, but in North America, education is uh, kind of a cookie-cutter stamp. You must learn this, and no deviation from it. In fact, the government of the United States back in the 90s created a program called Education 2000, and that was designed to be global so that every student in every country learned the same history. Therefore, in a decade or two, there will be no deviation from who remembers what history. Do you know? that uh, even my own younger children are not taught about World War II. They have no idea about concentration camps, about what the Nazis is not taught. They are also not taught American history. They don't learn about uh, the, what the revolution was about. They don't learn that there is a constitution because there is no more constitution. And uh, they're also, in North America, forcing out any teacher who is above 45 years old, they make they, they fire them, they make life difficult for them, they take their benefits away, they want the older teachers out, and they're putting them in their place, teachers in their early 20s, mid 20s, who are completely mind controlled and programmed, who repeat what's given to them without deviation, and the education system continues the way they want it to continue. They don't want the older teachers to bring up any of the old methods or the old information that might uh, get out into the children's mind. Yes, I did survive it. In fact, um, I was told that less than 1% of the people who were taken to the Montauk Project was 1970 to 1983. Less than 1% survived. And of that 1%, very few can function. In society, and I'm, I'm not saying that I function well in society, but uh, at least I'm able to get through uh, the day. They did have time travel, and actually, time travel is rather simple because every point in time and space has a unique vibrational energy. If you know the coordinates and the vibrational rate of a particular point in time and space, and you match a person, place, or thing to that rate, there's an instantaneous connection because it can't exist in two places at once. It only can exist in one place. So that's how time travel and deep space travel can happen in a matter of an instant. It doesn't matter where you are in the universe, it's not going to take hundreds of light years to get from point A to point B. If you know the coordinates of that location in another galaxy, and you match your vehicle to those coordinates vibrationally, they must match instantaneously. That's how time travel and deep space travel take place instantly. And uh, if you review history, um, maybe you'll find the truth somewhere that hasn't been re rewritten or destroyed. The stories in the Bible, and I don't mean to insult anyone who is religious, but most of the Bible is symbolic. It's not to be taken literally. In fact, the church is one of the biggest mind control agents on the earth. And again, I don't mean to insult anyone, 
But the Catholic religion is the most mind control program religion on the earth and started way, way back in 330 AD at the Council of Nicaea when they changed and rewrote the Bible to suit the Illuminati agenda. My opinion is all religion is man-made and made to control people. God has no religion. Because if you follow a specific religion, you have narrowed down the God mind, and that's an insult. You have to allow all things, and God mind allows all things. And that's why there are infinite universes, so the God mind can know all outcomes of all possibilities. So, my opinion, uh, there's no religion. There is simply a knowing of what the God mind is. Uh, we have learned in Montauk Project that the creation of uh, the Christ figure was actually manipulated. And that's a whole other long story, uh, but the whole idea of immaculate conception was about uh, in vitro fertilization and implantation. And that's what that was about. And in fact, uh, through the uh, time travel process, that they had in the Montauk project. They learned a lot about the Christ situation. The real name was Emmanuel, not what you've been told. And he survived the crucifixion and actually uh, made his way to uh, India, to an area called Kashmir. And if you go right now to the city of Srinagar, you will find his tomb. And it states right on there who this person is and the age of death. And in fact, he did have children with Mary Magdalene. And there is a doctrine. Uh, the Hamadi, the Hamadi uh, documents that were found in Egypt um, that describe uh, the uh, Gospel of Philip, of uh, Thomas, and of uh, Mary Magdalene, which uh, tells about uh, his marriage and the children that they had. And that's a whole other category of story, but they did uh, split and go their separate ways. Mary Magdalene and her entourage wound up in the south of France, and uh, Emmanuel and the oldest son went to Srinagar, and there's a whole uh, bit of information of how the grandchildren of the, the one in Srinagar uh, went east and actually created a colony in Japan and in China, and even both through Siberia. This is a very, very long, interesting story that the church has buried uh, kept the documents uh, out of position, and that is what the Templars found in the uh, one of the uh, stables underneath the temple in Jerusalem in 1099 that blackmailed the church. And that's why they were able to be as powerful as they were until the church tried to take their power back. What we learned is you cannot change the past. You cannot send someone back in time to kill someone and, and change history. The reason is, as I mentioned earlier, there are infinite timelines. So whatever you're trying to do already has happened in another timeline. So it's superfluous to do it in this timeline, and therefore there's no capability. If you did such a thing, you would find yourself returning to the timeline that's the alternate one, not the one you came from. So the ones who go back to change it will not come back to where they came from. And that's what we learned at the Montauk Project. So time is, the past is the past, and the future is yet to be seen, but yet they all exist simultaneously. And that's why when I talk to people, and I do consultations, I don't talk about past lives. I talk about simultaneous existence because you exist right now in all of them. It's simply a question of where you're focused. As I mentioned, infinite possibilities. I told you about the wormholes and the vortices, and they used to send uh, devices in to anchor a coordinate so they wouldn't have to try to find it again. And so very often, there will be a person that was sent into a particular place in space or a particular point in time with an anchoring device so that there'd be a loop to the current moment and they would have those coordinates permanently in their computer system. Mars, they also learned 
that Mars was once an inhabitable planet, just like Earth. And in fact, there was an atmosphere, there were oceans, everything that they're telling you now. This, I have this in my Blue Blood book many years ago. And in fact, uh, what happened was, and I don't know if I have that here, um, the reptilians sent uh, an ice comet into our solar system in order to destroy the human colonies. There was once a planet between Mars and Jupiter, which is called Maldek. And when the ice comet came close into our solar system, it made the planet Uranus flip on its axis. And that's why it rotates north to south instead of west to east. And then as it approached Jupiter, Maldek, and Mars, the gravitational pull of those three planets caused Maldek to explode which created the asteroid belt that now exists between Mars and Jupiter. And it also pulled the atmosphere and the oceans off of Mars. The ice comet then went into a circular orbit with the Earth, which was then the second planet from the Sun, and the Earth was completely covered in water. And as this spinning took place, the oceans of the Earth polarized and became ice caps, and then the ice comet and the Earth switched positions so that the ice comet took up the second position and the Earth was pushed out into the third position. And the ice comet then, because of the light from the sun, uh, evaporated the ice, which became clouds, and uh, we call that Venus now. In 1982, the Soviet Union sent a spacecraft with a very special camera to go below the clouds of Venus so that it could take pictures of the surface and transmit them back before crashing. And it did. And on one of the first photos, it showed seven domed areas on the surface of Venus equally spaced in a line. This was reported on the front page of the New York Times and the LA Times, maybe here, and a very long article of what the and it stated, of course, that NASA has decided that these are natural formations. If you know about reptilian culture and their hierarchy, they have a caste system so that they do not live together, the ones in the different castes and they have seven different living areas. And so that would explain what we saw on the surface of Venus. Now just last year, the Russians said they have reanalyzed the photographs that they took in 1982. And this is on conventional news people, this is not on uh, alternative news, conventional news. They stated that they saw reptilian-like creatures on the surface of Venus. So, very, very interesting uh, that now we're revealing it. And of course, yes, the Russians did say that they're going to uh, reveal what happened uh, with the aliens. And of course, as soon as I say that, uh, they are attacked with a meteor, which I might talk about tomorrow. In, in Montauk, we learned about hyperspace, which is a zone of energy. No time, no space, pure thought, pure energy. Those of you who come tomorrow afternoon, I'm going to teach you how to access this and use it. We use the hyperspace symbols that emanate from this zone. I will teach you the meanings of the different colors. I will even talk about dolphin frequency, lion frequency, bear frequency if we have time. And um, that will preclude any of your programming. Uh, from becoming a human device, a cyborg that they want people to become. And they also have a cadre of psychic assassins and warriors. And they also have um, uh, vigilantes and stalkers. All these intelligence agencies work together. There's a hybridization program, a marriage program to create children. And of course, uh, they are perfecting the mind control um, and, of course, they control the weather as well. There is a staged alien invasion coming. This is not a new plan. 
Do you know who thought of it first? I'm not going to give you a gift like the other guy, no. Well, I could give you one of his. He left some. I'll give you one of his gifts. Who, who created the stage alien invasion? Hitler and Werner von Braun. On his deathbed in the United States, Hitler von Braun said, the staged alien invasion is the final plan. It's the only way to scare the population into agreeing to a global government, to a one or new world order. That's the whole idea. Because if you're scared or fear, that opens up the programming. There's a program called Green Star, which is about alien interaction. Many of you have Green Star program. I'm going to say something that may insult some of you, but you know I'm known for my mouth. But channeling is from satellites. Channeled information is an electromagnetic frequency that opens up one of the compartments in the matrix where this alter alien personality then speaks. If you put all of the child information together, it's the same. They have different names, they have different planets. Information is the same. It's program. 1965, the US government created the New Age for the purpose of ultimately creating new world religion. So that ultimately, there'll be one world government, one world religion, one world army. And what did George Bush tell you a few years ago? Either you're with me or you're against me. There's nothing in between. And that's what will happen. Either if you, if you don't accept this religion, we prove that this Christ has come back down, and you don't accept it, then you must be against God. Or if you don't accept the new world government that saved you from alien invasion, then you must be terrorist. All of these things are happening now. They have the Blue Beam Project. It's old technology people. They tested it in 1962 in Havana Harbor, where they projected a, an image of the Blessed Virgin Mary over the harbor so that the communist regime would think that they have been uh, you know, touched by God, so to speak. That was 1962. Now, add 50 years to that technology, and imagine what you get. You get um, meteors from space. You get lights in the sky. You get the apparition of Jesus on the side of a bank. And on and on and on. This is called Blue Beam Project. They'll make you see everything. Majagoria is about Blue Beam Project. Don't you think if the Blessed Virgin Mary was going to come down and give us information, why would she only share it with those little children that no one else can see? Wouldn't she want everybody to see her? This is Blue Beam Project and mind control. Use your own mind to decipher it and see for yourself. And if you come tomorrow, I will show you how to do that. Yes, guess who's one of the icons of New World Religion? You know her. That's why she is in a glass coffin on an island waiting to be worshipped. Wouldn't it be interesting that Kate Middleton's baby is considered to be the new messiah? Isn't it interesting that the Pope resigned? Because he doesn't feel well. I understand my name is on the short list for Pope. I am going to Italy after this. And you know what? I have a very good friend whose sister worked in the Vatican. High level, high level. When she was being trained, they taught her. They said, when you speak in front of public, you must put yourself in bright red color. Any of you who know about hyperspace or language of color, you know that bright red means anger, fear, hostility, sexuality. So when the Pope is like this, and he's in bright red energetically, everyone's afraid, and they obey him. They also told her that they don't believe in Catholicism. 
The cardinals told her they don't believe in Catholicism. They said, that's for the people. They don't believe in it. It's a control system. I'm going to be speaking to her, interviewing her when I go to Italy. Of course, that ruins my chances for being Pope, but it's what it is. Yeah, they will create earthquakes, volcanoes. They are doing it. Uh, whatever happened to global warming? We don't see that term anymore. Why? Because people realized when it's snowing in Beverly Hills and Dubai and Africa, maybe it's not global warming. So now they're calling it climate change. Because people weren't accepting the global warming when there's one blizzard after another. So you know what they said last week in the United States it was really hilarious. They said the reason there's so many blizzards is because of global warming. Because when the atmosphere heats up, it holds more moisture so more snow can fall. Okay, hold on. Let me get this straight. We've heated up the atmosphere, so snow comes out of it. Wouldn't it be water? Wouldn't we have rainstorms? They need a, a new writer, I think, for their stories. They have the HARP project. It's not just in Alaska. HARP is in 13 locations around the world. Norway is one of them. And, and Montauk is another one, and they have changed weather patterns so that you will think that there's global warming or climate change. Did you notice that every July there's a picture in the newspaper of open water at the North Pole, and they say, look, there's no ice, the poles are melting. That's because it's freaking July. It's summertime, and the ice melts. You don't show those pictures in January, you show them in July. And then they show you the pictures of Antarctica with the chunks the size of Manhattan falling into the ocean. But they're not telling you that's only happening in one little corner where volcanic activity is erupting by the coastline. And so yes, it heats up the ocean in that area, causes ice to fall off, but the rest of Antarctica is recording the coldest temperatures it ever and the deepest ice and snow it ever recorded. But they don't tell you that part. You know, when I was in Antarctica, three years ago, I went to one of the British bases. And there's a big, by the way, Britain has the most southern post office in the world. Who they deliver to, I don't know. Maybe penguins get mail, I'm not sure. But there was a big plaque that said that the base was built, built to monitor the enemy. That's all it said. What enemy? Are there Al-Qaeda penguins? <laughs> Are the seals making bombs? What's go who's the enemy? Doesn't explain it. But what you also need to know is 1946, the war is over. America? And Britain sent a huge fleet of aircraft and ships to Antarctica for war. Fifty Americans were killed. I don't know how many British. But then they retreated after eight months. What did they find in Antarctica? Who knows? I'll give you one of his presents. They didn't come. Nazis. The Fourth Reich. I'm going to tell you something, people. You know, it's bizarre, but I've been accused of worse things than this. The Fourth Reich is in conjunction with the Kuiper Belt beings. Those Kuiper Belt beings are not interested in controlling this planet. They're only interested in eliminating the Illuminati. And when they do, they need a group on their Earth to run it for them to keep things the way they are now or will be. And that's the Fourth Reich. Not a good solution. You know? Would you rather have the Nazis or the Illuminati taking control of you? Which would you prefer? When I visited Latvia, no, it was Estonia, I said, 
What was better, the Nazi occupation or Soviet occupation? And they said, that's like asking me would I rather have a stroke or a heart attack. Well, the end result is the same. So no control is good, no matter who does it. Humans need to take control of themselves. And that's what I hope that people will learn to do through deprogramming. But they will create earthquakes. Uh, they will create uh, volcanic eruptions. They are already doing it. Why? Because they want you to believe that the book of Revelation is coming to life. They are going to create situations as described in the book of Revelation. That's their script that they wrote the Piso family in 300 AD. New Testament is a script of Illuminati. But on a positive note, you can do work, and I'll go over this tomorrow. I have uh, time to give you work that will help fix this within your own mind if you're willing to do it. It's a, it is work, mental work, and most people don't like doing mental work. They'd rather take a pill, but there's no pill. You have to do this work yourself and reintegrate your mind pattern, ground yourself, balance the two hemispheres of your brain, learn what your energy system is made of and how to use it, and then you can take control of yourself. And if you learn protection techniques and high frequency techniques, nobody can take control of you. Human beings have, as a species, a victimization mentality. When you have a victimization mentality, you attract tyrants and oppressors. And that's what we have. So if each of us removes the victimization from our mind pattern and replaces it with our original soul personality thoughts, we could really have a wonderful planet. We really can. There's 7.3 billion people on this planet. They are telling you that we're overcrowded and polluting and there's no food and there's no utilities and all of this. Well, let me tell you something. Most of this planet is uninhabited. If you fly across Siberia, it's empty. Australia is empty. Canada, empty. Most of Central and Western US, empty. There's room for another seven billion. And we can grow as much food as we need if we are allowed. It's really up to you. You give the Illuminati the power by going along. When the US invaded Iraq, they dropped leaflets all over Iraq in Arabic and English. The leaflet said, Resistance is futile. Where did you hear that before? Star Trek. Star Trek. Oh, come, get something from here. <laughs> They're creating the Borg. You are becoming the Borg. Yes? Little girls with implants. Always on cell phone and iPad. I have yet to see in an airport anyone who was not attached to something. Don't do that, people. Be human beings. Be spiritual first, and then have the human experience. That's why you're here. It's okay to be physical. That's why you're here. But don't stay only in that. Apply the spiritual to the physical. And change everything. You can change. I give you this analogy. Your thoughts are like film. Your brain is the projector. Physical reality is the screen. So if you don't like the movie that's playing, change the film. That's your thoughts. And that something else will be projected out. It's really up to you. I can change my little corner, but I'm not going to change when I can't change yours. They will. Let them. Don't let them. Guns are useless. Bombs are useless. They shouldn't exist. They're there to scare you. Am I done? <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you. Stuart Swedlow. Before we break for lunch, a couple of questions, yeah? Yeah, something over there, I'll come over. Uh... Good man, I'm starving. <laughs> well, use your mind and feed yourself. <laughs> Hi, um, I just wondered what you think happens. It's my belief that um, if you are different, if you think outside of that box, if somehow, I don't know whether it's genetically or whatever, I've questioned society reality as a whole from a small child, you're automatically labelled a conspiracy theorist, a weirdo, a freak, a gink, whatever. So your whole life becomes a battle. How do you cope with that battle? And, you know, is there anything, you know, that you can... It's, for me, what was fascinating that you said your, your ancestor came over to Liverpool. My grandfather, but yeah. he was an immigrant. Yeah, but he, it was through the communist movement, wasn't it? Um, and uh, throughout my life I've found myself attached to certain areas to try and find and, and, and gain knowledge. I, I was a member of the Milton Tendency in Liverpool for 10 years. Um, so I've questioned everything. What do you think it is about people like ourselves who do question it that makes us different? Has something happened with the programme? Has it gone wrong? Well, let's hope. Uh, yeah, thank you. Let's yeah. hope it's gone wrong. Yeah. There are some individuals who are resistant to the programming because of genetics, mind uh, patterns, uh, experiences in alternate realities. There's some, or a combination, and there's something that creates the resistance. And those are the ones they target the most. That's what Michael Jackson was about. Black people are very hard to program. He was the prototype to relate to the black race so that they could pull them in. And that's why over a period of time he became he didn't know if he was black or white, male or female, human or alien. He didn't know who he was. His last tour was about singing about this and telling people, and so he's gone. He was a murderer. And so you have to be very careful when you are big mouth like me and you talk to people. You know, I was just telling someone here last year when I left Glasgow and I flew to Keflavik, uh plane caught on fire. And I said, well, you know, that's one way to go, but use your mental work and the plane landed. You see? You know, I've been attacked so many times you can't even I can't even tell you. In many different ways. But if you have a mind pattern and you use your techniques, you go on. I know your audience. I wouldn't say this in the Catholic Church. <laughs> I wouldn't go to Parliament and talk about you were talking about frequencies and you're channeling in. Uh, you know, time travel and frequencies. Do you actually know what the frequencies are? Could I give you a list of frequencies at different places? Yeah. Like you want to visit ancient Rome and I'll give you the coordinates and you'll go? Yeah. yeah. Do you actually know these frequencies? No, those were never given to me. Again, I was just the lowly guinea pig, you know, that they used me. Um, all the information, I never had that information. The, you know, the technology, all of this, not, no. But uh, government has all of that. Um, and Britain, I mentioned to you about uh, Montauk. Uh, Britain had, and still has, Tavistock, which is in London. And uh, the Soviet Union had a place in, um, in, in uh, Ukraine uh, that they used, in Odessa. It was called the Filatov. I Institute, which was supposed to be about uh, soldiers, military getting their eyes checked, but they were putting plants in them. So those three countries, US, Britain, and the Soviet Union, uh, all did extensive time travel and mind control experimentation. I'm going to tell you, if I, if I please may say, all of your program, 100%. Now, one to two percent of the population is specifically programmed. That means you have a series of programs in your matrix cube, which is extensive, and you have specific functions. The rest are general or mass program, which is you hear something on BBC, on CNN, and you go, okay, I accept it. 
oh, the media was running 100 million that happened. Okay, that's okay. You know, you're more concerned about paying your bills and uh, uh, getting your, keeping your jobs and, and getting your loan for your car. You don't care about what media hit in, in Soviet Union. You don't care about uh, what the, who's a leader in Afghanistan. These things are not on your mind. You're interested in getting your lives in order. That's part of the diversion process. That's part of the programming process. Keep you diverted over here so that you don't know what's going on over here, and when you finally find out, it is too late. That's what's going on. And they're very successful at it. This lady has a question. Okay. Where we going? That? Yeah, I just like to see him run. <laughs> Hi, uh, I just wanted to ask what your own personal thoughts are for the future, and does humanity actually stand a chance in any of this? Ah. Well, talking about that, if I may, have my Scottish friends down here, and they said it's just them against the, the English, and they're going to give you a wee chance. <laughs> give them a wee chance. So yes, humanity has a wee chance. But I will tell you, I'll tell you this. I believe, I, I know, that the Illuminati are in big trouble. They didn't get to the part to tell you in the last four years, and maybe those of you who read my website have learned about it, there is a massing of vehicles in the Kuiper Belt. The Kuiper Belt is that energy field beyond our solar system. It surrounds it like a shell of an egg. And you would have noticed in the last couple of years, too, that NASA has a space cam on the sun that showed huge objects coming out of the sun. Have you, have you seen that? Yeah. And when they were digitally enhanced, they showed windows, you could see equipment, and they said, oh, it's an anomaly of the, of the, uh, of the photography. These yes. vehicles went directly to Kuiper Belt. Directly to Kuiper Belt. The solar system is now surrounded. Keep this in mind, people. This planet is the Afghanistan of the galaxy. This is the Iraq of the galaxy. And so there are beings out there who think we are very dangerous. And they're right. Because as I mentioned to you, the Draco have an agenda of taking over what they consider inferior civilizations. But the Illuminati, being hybrids of the Draco and humanity have decided they're going to create their own galactic empire and take over from the Draco. So this has become dangerous. What's the precedent? Well, the United States took over from the British Empire, right? No more British Empire. I think it snowed one day and they closed it down. We have to laugh in the United States when we hear about that in Britain. You know, this, this much snow and heat throw and there's no more airport. And I take off in a blizzard. In fact, I was sitting in the lounge and I hear that this guy from Britain, he says, he's talking to me, he says, I was in Heathrow a couple of weeks ago and I closed it for nothing and I'm in a blizzard here and they're taking off. Well, if we closed Chicago every time there was a blizzard, there would be no flights till May. Not mention this outside of my own box before. Um, but been thinking a long time about something I experienced. Um, uh, are you familiar with Rendlesham Forest? Yes. Okay. Yes. Each time I go over there and it's becoming stronger, um, the rumbling and the pounding under my feet and the um, auditory phenomena that's going on in there is becoming so intense it's almost like trying to break out of the prison trying to get out of that area. Are, are you living in that area? No, I was born in that area, grew up in that area, and I went to the forest a lot. Um, and as a child, although I was drawn to the place, I didn't actually experience this phenomenon. But now I'm revisiting the area with my husband and my children. Um, my husband and I are noticing this very strongly. Um, that it, it's, it's almost like a... Um, uh, an environmental shift around, so I can't hardly explain it really. Yeah, but but there's something going on under there, and, and yeah. I'm, like, you know, touching on it, I wouldn't go outside of here, but it's just, it feels like it kind of draws you in, 
that holds you and you really try and break out to get away. That, that incident was a stage <coughs> event. Um, it was staged by the American government to test the military base if it were attacked by aliens, uh, what their reaction would be. And right, so it's right. been there was yeah. a heavy bombardment of heal up and microwave as well as the blue beam that I spoke yeah. about. Uh, that's what that, show, that was a show. That was what happened there. Yeah, but it's still going on. Something is still going on under there. That area is an experimental zone uh, for uh, such things. So if you stay in this area, you will feel the electromagnetic frequency. Why do they let the public in then? Sorry? Why do they let the public in? So that is not mysterious. They let okay. people now in Montauk Project uh, area as well. It's a public park. Right, because yeah. I do notice military vehicles around the place. The best place, to, the best place to hide something is right in front of you. Of course. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you. Stuart Swedlow, everybody. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you. Describe uh, the uh, Gospel of Philip, of uh, Thomas, and of uh, Mary Magdalene, which uh, tells about uh, his marriage and the children that they had. And that's a whole other category of story, but they did uh, split and go their separate ways. Mary Magdalene and her entourage wound up in the south of France, and uh, Emmanuel and the oldest son went to Shunagar, and there's a whole a uh, bit of information about the grandchildren of the, the one in Shunagar uh, went east and actually created a colony in Japan and in China and even both through Siberia. This is a very, very long, interesting story that the church has buried, uh, kept the documents uh, out of position, and that is what the Templars found in the uh, one of the uh, stables underneath the temple in Jerusalem in 1099 that blackmailed the church. And that's why they were able to be as powerful as they were until the church tried to take their power back. What we learned is you cannot change the past. You cannot send someone back in time to kill someone and, and change history. The reason is, as I mentioned earlier, there are infinite timelines. So whatever you're trying to do, already has happened in another timeline. So it's superfluous to do it in this timeline, and therefore there's no capability. If you did such a thing, you would find yourself returning to the timeline that's the alternate one, not the one you came from. So the ones who go back to change it will not come back to where they came from. And that's what we learned at the Montauk Project. So time is, the past is the past, and the future is yet to be seen, but yet they all exist simultaneously. And that's why when I talk to people, and I do consultations, I don't talk about past lives. I talk about simultaneous existence, because you exist right now in all of them. It's simply a question of where you're focused. And as I mentioned, infinite possibilities. I told you about the wormholes and the vortices. And they used to send uh, devices in to anchor a coordinate so they wouldn't have to try to find it again. And so very often, there will be a person that was sent into a particular place in space or a particular point in time with an anchoring device so that there'd be a loop to the current moment and they would have those coordinates permanently in their computer system. Mars. 
They also learned that Mars was once an inhabitable planet, just like Earth. And in fact, there was an atmosphere, there were oceans, everything that they're telling you now. This, I have this in my Blue Blood book many years ago. And in fact, uh, what happened was, and I don't know if I have that here, um, the reptilians sent uh, an ice comet into our solar system in order to destroy the human colonies. There was once a planet between Mars and Jupiter, which is called Maldek. And when the ice comet came close into our solar system, it made the planet Uranus flip on its axis. And that's why it rotates north to south instead of west to east. And then as it approached Jupiter, Maldek, and Mars, the gravitational pull of those three planets caused Maldek to explode, which created the asteroid belt that now exists between Mars and Jupiter. And it also pulled the atmosphere and the oceans off of Mars. The ice comet then went into a circular orbit with the Earth, which was then the second planet from the Sun, and the Earth was completely covered in water. And as this spinning took place, the oceans of the Earth polarized and became ice caps, and then the ice comet and the Earth switched positions so that the ice comet took up the second position and the Earth was pushed out into the third position. And the ice comet then, because of the light from the sun, uh, evaporated the ice, which became clouds, and uh, we call that Venus now. In 1982, the Soviet Union sent a spacecraft with a very special camera to go below the clouds of Venus so that it could take pictures of the surface and transmit them back before crashing. And it did. And on one of the first photos, it showed seven domed areas on the surface of Venus, equally spaced in a line. This was reported on the front page of the New York Times and the LA Times, maybe here, and a very long article of what the story and it stated, of course, that NASA has decided that these are natural formations. If you know about reptilian culture and their hierarchy, they have a caste system so that they do not live together, the ones in the different castes, and they have seven different living areas. And so that would explain what we saw on the surface of Venus. Now just last year, the Russians said they have reanalyzed the photographs that they took in 1982, <coughs> And this is on conventional news, people. This is not on uh, all alternative news. Conventional news. They stated that they saw reptilian-like creatures on the surface of Venus. So, very, very interesting uh, that now we're revealing it. And of course, yes, the Russians did say that they're going to uh, reveal what happened uh, with the aliens. And of course, as soon as they say that, uh, they are attacked with a meteor, which I might talk about tomorrow. In, in Montauk, we learned about hyperspace, which is a zone of energy. No time, no space, pure thought, pure energy. Those of you who come tomorrow afternoon, I'm going to teach you how to access this and use it. We use the hyperspace symbols that emanate from this zone. I will teach you the meanings of the different colors. I will even talk about dolphin frequency, line frequency, air frequency if we have time, and um, that will preclude any of your programming uh, from becoming a human device, a cyborg that they want people to become. And they also have a cadre of psychic assassins and warriors, and they also have um, uh, vigilantes and stalkers. All these intelligence agencies work together. There's a hybridization program, a marriage program to create children, and of course uh, they are perfecting the mind control, um, and of course they control the weather as well. There is a staged alien invasion coming. This is 
not a new plan. Do you know who thought of it first? I'm not going to give you a gift like the other guy, no. Well, I could give you one of his. He left some. I'll give you one of his gifts. Who, who created staged alien invasion? Hitler and Bernard von Braun. On his deathbed in the United States, Hitler von Braun said, the staged alien invasion is the final plan. It's the only way to scare the population into agreeing to a global government, to a one or new world order. That's the whole idea. Because if you're scared or fear, that opens up the programming. There's a program called Green Star, which is about alien interaction. Many of you have Green Star programming. I'm going to say something that may insult some of you, but you know I'm known for my mouth. But channeling is from satellites. Channeled information is an electromagnetic frequency that opens up one of the compartments in the matrix where this alter alien personality then speaks. If you put all of the channeled information together, it's the same. They have different names, they have different planets, information's the same. It's programmed. 1965, the US government created the New Age for the purpose of ultimately creating New World Religion. So that ultimately, there will be one world government, one world religion, one world army. And what did George Bush tell you a few years ago? Either you're with me or you're against me. There's nothing in between. And that's what will happen. Either if you, if you don't accept this religion, we prove that this Christ has come back down, and you don't accept it, then you must be against God. Or if you don't accept the new world government that saved you from alien invasion, then you must be terrorist. All of these things are happening now. They have the Blue Beam Project. It's old technology people. They tested it in 1962 in Havana Harbor, where they projected a, an image of the Blessed Virgin Mary over the harbor so that the communist regime would think that they have been uh, you know, touched by God, so to speak. That was 1962. Now, add 50 years to that technology, and imagine what you get. You get... Uh, years from space, you get lights in the sky, you get the apparition of Jesus on the side of a bank, and on and on and on. This is called Blue Beam Project. They'll make you see everything. Majagoria is about Blue Beam Project. Don't you think if the Blessed Virgin Mary was going to come down and give us information, why would she only share it with those little children and no one else can see? Would you want everybody to see them? This is Blue Beam Project and Mind Control. Use your own mind to decipher it and see for yourself. And if you come tomorrow, I will show you how to do that. Yes, guess who's one of the icons of New World Religion? You know her. That's why she is in a glass coffin on an island waiting to be worshipped. Wouldn't it be interesting that Kate Middleton's baby is considered to be the new messiah. Isn't it interesting that the Pope resigned? Because he doesn't feel well. I understand my name is on the short list for Pope. I have to go to Italy after this. And you know what? I have a very good friend whose sister worked in the Vatican high level, high level. When she was being trained, they taught her, they said, when you speak in front of public, you must put yourself in bright red color. Any of you who know about hyperspace or language of color, you know that bright red means anger, fear, hostility, sexuality. So when the Pope is like this, and he's in bright red energetically, everyone's afraid. <coughs> And they obey him. They also told her that they don't believe in Catholicism. 
The cardinals told her they don't believe in Catholicism. They said, that's for the people. They don't believe in it. It's a control system. I'm going to be speaking to her, interviewing her when I go to Italy. Of course, that ruins my chances for being told, but it's what it is. Yeah, they will create earthquakes. Well, can't, they are doing it. Um, whatever happened to global warming? We don't see that turn anymore. Why? Because people realize when it's snowing in Beverly Hills and Dubai and Africa, maybe it's not global warming. So now they're calling it climate change. Because people weren't accepting the global warming when there's one blizzard after another. So you know what they said last week in the United States it was really hilarious. They said the reason there's so many blizzards is because of global warming, because when the atmosphere heats up, it holds more moisture so more snow can fall. Okay, hold on. Let me get this straight. We've heated up the atmosphere so snow comes out of it. Wouldn't it be water? Wouldn't we have rainstorms? They need a, a new writer, I think, for their stories. They have the HARP project. It's not just in Alaska. HARP is in 13 locations around the world. Norway is one of them. And Montauk is another one. And they have changed weather patterns so that you will think that there's global warming or climate change. Did you notice that every July there's a picture in the newspaper of open water at the North Pole? And they say, look, there's no ice. The poles are melting. That's because it's freaking July. It's summertime and the ice melts. You don't show those pictures in January. You show them in July. And then they show you the pictures of Antarctica with the chunks the size of Manhattan falling into the ocean. But they're not telling you that's only happening in one little corner where volcanic activity is erupting by the coastline. And so yes, it heats up the ocean in that area, it causes ice to fall off. But the rest of Antarctica is recording the coldest temperatures ever and the deepest ice and snow ever recorded. But they don't tell you that part. You know, when I was in Antarctica three years ago, I went to one of the British bases. And there's a big, by the way, Britain has the most southern post office in the world. Who they deliver to, I don't know. Maybe penguins get mail. I'm not sure. But there was a big plaque that said that the base was built, built to monitor the enemy. That's all it said. What enemy? Are there Al-Qaeda penguins? Are the seals making bombs? What's go who's the enemy? Doesn't explain it. But what you also need to know is 1946, the war is over. America and, and Britain sent a huge fleet of aircraft and ships to Antarctica for war. 50 Americans were killed. I don't know how many British. But then they retreated after eight months. What did they find in Antarctica? Who knows? I gave you one of his presents. Right there, you know? Nazis. The Fourth Reich. I'm going to tell you something, people. I know it's bizarre, but I've been accused of worse things than this. The Fourth Reich is in conjunction with Kuiper Belt beings. Those Kuiper Belt beings are not interested in controlling this planet. They're only interested in eliminating the Illuminati. And when they do, they need a group on their Earth to run it for them to keep things the way they are now, or will be. And that's the Fourth Reich. Not a good solution, you know? Would you rather have the Nazis or the Illuminati taking control of you? Which would you prefer? When I visited Latvia, no, it was Estonia, I said, 
What was better, the Nazi occupation or Soviet occupation? And they said, that's like asking me would I rather have a stroke or a heart attack. Well, the end result is the same. So no control is good, no matter who does it. Humans need to take control of themselves. And that's what I hope that people will learn to do through deprogramming. But they will create earthquakes. Uh, they will create uh, volcanic eruptions. They are already doing it. Why? Because they want you to believe that the book of Revelation is coming to life. They are going to create situations as described in the book of Revelation. That's their script that they wrote the Pizzo family in 300 AD. New Testament is a script of Illuminati. But on a positive note, you can do work, and I'll go over this tomorrow. I have uh, time to give you work that will help fix this within your own mind if you're willing to do it. It's a, it is work, mental work, and most people don't like doing mental work. They'd rather take a pill, but there's no pill. You have to do this work yourself and reintegrate your mind pattern Ground yourself, balance the two hemispheres of your brain, learn what your energy system is made of and how to use it, and then you can take control of yourself. And if you learn protection techniques and high frequency techniques, nobody can take control of you. Human beings have, as a species, a victimization mentality. When you have a victimization mentality, you attract tyrants and oppressors. And that's what we have. So if each of us removes the victimization from our mind pattern and replaces it with our original soul personality thoughts, we could really have a wonderful planet. We really can. There's 7.3 billion people on this planet. They are telling you that we're overcrowded and polluting and there's no food and there's no utilities and all of this. Well, let me tell you something. Most of this planet is uninhabited. If you fly across Siberia, it's empty. Australia is empty. Canada, empty. Most of Central and Western U.S., empty. There's room for another seven billion. And we can grow as much food as we need if we are allowed. It's really up to you. You give the Illuminati the power by going along. When the US invaded Iraq, they dropped leaflets all over Iraq in Arabic and in English. A leaflet said, Resistance is futile. Where did you hear that before? Star Trek. Star Trek. Okay, get something from here. <laughs> They're creating the Borg. You are becoming the Borg. Yes? Little girls with implants. Always on cell phone and iPad. I have yet to see in an airport anyone who was not attached to something. Don't do that, people. Be human beings. Be spiritual first, and then have the human experience. That's why you're here. It's okay to be physical. That's why you're here. But don't stay only in that. Apply the spiritual to the physical. And change everything. You can change. I give you this analogy. Your thoughts are like film. Your brain is the projector. Physical reality is the screen. So if you don't like the movie that's playing, change the film. That's your thoughts. And then something else will be projected out. It's really up to you. I can change my little corner, but I'm not going to change when I can't change yours. They will. Let them. Don't let them. Guns are useless. Bombs are useless. They shouldn't exist. They're there to scare you. Am I done? <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you. Stuart Swedler. are different if you think outside of that box, if somehow, I don't know whether it's genetically or whatever, I've questioned society, reality as a whole from a small child. You're automatically labelled a conspiracy theorist, a weirdo, a freak, a gink, whatever. So your whole life becomes a battle. How do you cope with that battle? And, you know, is there anything, you know, that you can... If, for me, what was fascinating that you said your, your ancestor came over to Liverpool. My grandfather, but yeah. he was an immigrant. Yeah, but he, it was through the communist movement, wasn't it? Um, and uh, throughout my life, I've found myself attached to certain areas to try and find and, and, and gain knowledge. I, I was a member of the Milton Tendency in Liverpool for 10 years. Um, so I've questioned everything. What do you think it is about people like ourselves who do question it? that makes us different. Has something happened with the programme? Has it gone wrong? Well, let's hope. Ah, yes, I'm sure. <laughs> let's yeah. hope it's gone wrong. Yeah. There are some individuals who are resistant to the programming because of genetics, mind uh, patterns, uh, experiences in alternate realities. There's some, or a combination, and there's something that creates the resistance. And those are the ones they target the most. That's what Michael Jackson was about. Black people are very hard to program. He was the prototype to relate to the black race so that they could pull them in. And that's why over a period of time he became, he didn't know if he was black or white, male or female, human or alien. He didn't know who he was. His last tour was about singing about this and telling people, and so he's gone. He was a murderer. And so you have to be very careful when you are big mouth like me and you talk to people. You know, I was just telling someone here last year when I left Glasgow and I flew to Keflavik, uh, plane caught on fire. See? And then, well, you know, that's one way to go, but use your mental work and the plane landed. You see? You know, I've been attacked so many times you can't even, I can't even tell you in many different ways. But, if you have a mind pattern and you use your techniques, you go on. And know your audience. I wouldn't say this in the Catholic Church. <laughs> I wouldn't go to Parliament and talk about it. You talked about frequencies and you go channeling in. Uh, you know, time travel and frequencies. Do you actually know what the frequencies are? Could I give you a list of frequencies at different places? Yeah. Like you want to visit ancient Rome and I'll give you the coordinates and you'll go? <laughs> Yeah. Do you actually know these people? No, those were never given to me. Again, I was just the lowly guinea pig, you know, that they used me. Um, all the information, I never had that information, you know, the technology, all of this, not, no. But uh, government has all of that. Um, and Britain, I mentioned to you about uh, Montauk. Uh, Britain had, and still has, Tavistock, which is in London. And uh, the Soviet Union had a place in, um, in, in uh, Ukraine uh, that they used, in Odessa. It was called the Filatov Eye Institute, which was supposed to be about uh, soldiers, military, getting their eyes checked, but they would put implants in them. So those three countries, US, Britain, and the Soviet Union, uh, all did extensive time travel and the mind control experimentation. I'm going to tell you, if I, if I please may say, all of your program, 100%. Now, 1% to 2% of the population is specifically programmed. That means you have a series of programs in your matrix cube, which is extensive, and you have specific functions. The rest are general or mass programs which is, you hear something on BBC, on CNN, and you go, okay, I accept it. 
oh, the media was running 100 million that happened. Okay, that's okay. You know, you're more concerned about paying your bills and uh, uh, getting your, keeping your jobs and, and getting your loan for your car. You don't care about what media hit in, in Soviet Union. You don't care about uh, what, who's a leader in Afghanistan. These things are not on your mind. You're interested in getting your lives in order. That's part of the diversion process. That's part of the programming process. Keep you diverted over here so that you don't know what's going on over here, and when you finally find out, it's too late. That's what's going on. And they're very successful at it. This lady has a question. Okay. Where we going? Yeah, I just like to see him run. <laughs> Hi, uh, I just wanted to ask what your own personal thoughts are for the future, and does humanity actually stand a chance in any of this? Ah, well, talking about that, if I may, I have my Scottish friends down here, and they said it's just them against the, the English, and they're going to give you a wee chance. <laughs> give them a wee chance. So yes, humanity has a wee chance. But I will tell you, I'll tell you this. I believe. I know, but the Illuminati are in big trouble. Because they didn't get to the part to tell you that in the last four years, and maybe those of you who read my website have learned about it, there is a massing of vehicles in the Kuiper Belt. The Kuiper Belt is that energy field beyond our solar system. It surrounds it like a shell of an egg. And you would have noticed in the last couple of years, too, that NASA has a space cam on the sun that showed huge objects coming out of the sun. Have you, have you seen that? And when they were digitally enhanced, they showed windows, you could see equipment, and they said, oh, it's an anomaly of the, of the, uh, of the photography. These vehicles went directly to Kuiper Belt. Directly to Kuiper Belt. The solar system is now surrounded. Keep this in mind, people. This planet is the Afghanistan of the galaxy. This is the Iraq of the galaxy. And so there are beings out there who think we are very dangerous. And they're right. Because as I mentioned to you, the Draco have an agenda of taking over what they consider inferior civilizations. But the Illuminati, being hybrids of the Draco and humanity, have decided they're going to create their own galactic empire and take over from the Draco. So this has become dangerous. What's the precedent? Well, the United States took over from the British Empire, right? No more British Empire. I think it snowed one day and they closed it down. <laughs> we have to laugh in the United States when we hear about that in Britain. You know, this, this much snow in Heathrow and there's no more airport. And I take off in blizzard. In fact, I was sitting in the lounge and I hear that this guy from Britain, he says, he's talking to me, he says, I was in Heathrow a couple of weeks ago and I closed it for nothing and I'm in a blizzard here and they're taking off. Well, if we close Chicago every time there was a blizzard, there would be no flights till May. No, I this outside of my own box before, um, but been thinking a long time about something I experienced. Um, uh, are you familiar with Rendlesham Forest? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Each time I go over there and it's becoming stronger, um, the rumbling and the pounding under my feet and the um, auditory phenomena that's going on in there is becoming so intense, it's almost like trying to break out of the prison, trying to get out of that uh, are, are you living in that area? No, I, I was born in that area, grew up in that area, and I, I went to the forest a lot. Um, and as a child, although I was drawn to the place, I didn't actually experience this phenomenon. But now I'm revisiting the area with my husband and my children. Um, my husband and I are noticing this very strongly. Um, that it, it's, it's almost like um, uh, an, an environmental shift around us. I can't hardly explain it really. Yeah, but there's something going on under there, and, and I'm, yeah. you know, touching on it at a window outside of here. But it's just, it feels like it kind of draws you in. 
and holds you, and you really try and break out to get away. That, that incident was a stage one. Um, was a stage by the American government to test the military base if it were attacked by aliens, uh, what their reaction would be. And right, so it's right. been there was yeah. a heavy bombardment of heal up and microwave as well as the blue beam that I spoke yes. about. Uh, that's what that show, that was a show. That was what happened there. Yeah, but it's still going on. Something is still going on under there. That area is an experimental zone uh, for no. such things. So if you stay in this area, you will feel the electromagnetic frequency. Why do they let the public in then? Sorry? Why do they let the public in? So that it's not mysterious. They let okay. people now in Montauk Project uh, area as well. It's a public park. Right, because yeah. I do notice military vehicles around the place. The best place, to, the best place to hide something is right in front of you. Yeah, of course. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you. Stuart Swedlow, everybody. Thank you, Stuart.